the semifinals here at Madison Square Garden in New York City and the number one seed Georgetown Hoyas is looking for a trip to the finals to get there they'll have to knock off the upset minded West Virginia Mountaineers welcome back to continuing coverage of championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods we're at the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal our first semifinal tonight West Virginia, which defeated Connecticut yesterday, taking on Georgetown, which took care of Villanova. Let's look at the brackets right now, and our second semifinal that we'll have for you tonight will feature Marquette and Pittsburgh. Notice the absence of the number two, number three, and number four seeds, as five, six, and seven were all victorious yesterday. Hi everybody, Dan Schulman and Len Elmore. Glad you're back with us again for what should be another great doubleheader of action from the Garden here tonight. Len, let's start with Georgetown, the number one seed. You can't shoot the ball any better than they did yesterday against Villanova. Well, they're playing with a championship air about them. And against Villanova, the number one team in the nation in field goal percentage defense shows that they can also score. They took what the defense gave them. Roy Hibbert was being guarded inside and the long range shooters went to work. 17 of 28 from beyond the arc. And that quarterfinal shooting clinic highlights their depth and versatility. You take a look at the shot chart right here and you notice that Georgetown favors the right side of that three-point arc. I guess West Virginia probably knows that too. <laughs> if they didn't before, they sure do now. 17 threes, sets a school record, ties a Big East tournament record. Now for West Virginia. They are a team that has a young man by the name of Joe Alexander. A couple of weeks ago, maybe folks outside the Big East didn't know anything about him. He's on the verge of becoming a household name across the country. Well, lately, Joe Alexander has taken all that talk about his potential and actually put it to work. I mean, this is a young man that's averaging 28 points in two games in this tournament, and over the last five, averaging almost 30 points. The improvement is in his confidence, in his mechanics. He's squaring up to the basket. He's putting arc on his shot. Joe Alexander has taken the speculation about his future, and he's now turned it into high praise for his presence. Tonight's Star Watch presented by MLB 2K. Joe Alexander, 56 points in his first two games here in the Big East Tournament. And what was up with Roy Hibbert yesterday for the Hoyas? Well, scoreless, only played 14 minutes. Roy Hibbert has to begin to assert himself in the paint. Georgetown can't go too far unless he's the man inside. And for more on the man inside for the Hoyas, let's say hello to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, in those 14 minutes, Roy Hibbert only managed to take two shots. He missed them both. And his coach, John Thompson III, said about that effort, that cannot happen and it will not happen again. He simply must get the ball and he must score. That said, they were prepared for Villanova to have multiple bodies around Mr. Hibbert. And they had prepared their shooters saying, be ready on the catch and make shots, guys. 25 assists on 28 field goals. A dangerous team if they're that without Roy being productive. All right, Doris, let's check out the starting lineups now presented by Aero Postal for West Virginia. An underrated point guard in Darius Nichols, a sharp shooter at Alex Ruoff. Deshaun Butler, 17 points in each of his first two games here. Joe Alexander, first team All-Big East, and a fifth-year senior in Jamie Smalligan in the middle. For Georgetown, Jonathan Wallace, second team all Big East. Jesse Sapps had a couple of big games here in New York. A talented freshman at Austin Freeman, a versatile forward in Dewan Summers, and then Roy Hibbert, a first team all Big East performer this year. Tonight's game between the Mountaineers and the Hoyas is also available in high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. West Virginia looking for its second trip to the Big East Tournament Championship game. Georgetown trying to defend its Big East Championship that had won on this floor a year ago. Bob Huggins, what a job he has done in his first year at his alma mater back at Morgantown. A team that was picked 10th in the Big East preseason wound up 5th. And you see early evidence of Joe Alexander's athleticism as he easily wins the tip. Well, a couple of things to watch out for as Georgetown opens in man. Can Nichols and Ruoff handle the pressure? Can they manage the game and find a way to get the ball to Joe Alexander? Dewan Summers looks like he draws the early assignment. Not sure what kind of a defense Georgetown looks like, Len. A couple of the guys are a little confused. Well, they were matching up yep. and switching a little bit. That's why Roy Hibbert is way out on the floor, which doesn't really bode well, but he's stuck now with yep. Ruoff. 
Virginia. And, and, and West Virginia turns it over. Great denial of Joe Alexander. It was the ball pressure that allows the defenders to get where they need to be. And now we're going to take a look at the defense against Roy Hibbert. Right now, it seems Jamie Smallman is just going to play him man-to-man. -man. Bob Huggins prefers man-to-man. -man. They played zone yesterday, kind of a modified form of a 2-3 zone. Bob Huggins calls it a point drop. It looks more like a 1-1-3, as strange as that sounds. But they do open up in a man-to-man, and Iden Hibbert is called for the offensive foul. Well, you know what? I think John Thompson III can live with that because it shows Hibbert as being more assertive. Smalligan playing him very physical, and it was that little elbow shot, really probably unintentional, little elbow shot to Smalligan's head that got the offensive foul call because they've been banging shoulders. Hibbert, a guy who played so well in the Big East tournament a year ago, dominant in the championship game win over Pittsburgh. Nichols has it blocked by Hibbert. A save by Sapp. West Virginia, two trips, unable to get a shot up on the rim. And again, you look down right in the middle of your screen, Small again, and Hibbert kind of banging each other. When Hibbert goes to the high post, it's not as physical. The drive by Jesse Sapp. Alexander is covering him right now. Boy, interesting matchups early in this game. And now Smalligan gets called for the foul. So each of the big guys with an early foul. And Jamie Smalligan complaining to the official on the baseline who was standing right there and said, you didn't call it. Somebody else outside had to do it. But you know what? you got to be able to kind of nip that in the bud right now. They're getting a little too physical. Both sides. Smalligan's not a big scorer. He will take the outside shot. Only plays... About 12 to 15 minutes a game. West Virginia usually goes smaller for most of the game. We'll see if they do against the huge Hoyas led by Hibbert. Dewan Summers for three. Hibbert with the follow. We talk about being more assertive. If you can't get the ball, get to the weak side or the front of the rim. Look for putbacks. And Roy Hibbert on his game so far. West Virginia not the three-point shooting team of the John B. line era. They still retain, of course, some of that ability, most notably Alex Ruoff, number 22. But they've become more of a more and more of a Bob Huggins-style team over the year. Of course, as I say that, Deshaun Butler says, there's one for you, Coach B. line. <laughs> well, Bob Huggins hasn't exactly moved away from some of the things that West Virginia developed on the John B. line. His emphasis has been more on rebounding, playing stronger defense, and you can see the results. Sap into the chest of Small again, and Sap is called for the offensive foul. Well, that's one of the things, being able to step up, take charges, play stronger defense, and that's a good call by the officials. You don't necessarily have to be set to draw an offensive foul, but here you take a look, Small again turns and blocks out the wrong guy, it seems, as the lane Wide open for Roy Hibbert on the offensive side. Ed Corbett and Mike Kitts and Jim Haney, our officials here tonight at Madison Square Garden. Joe Alexander can put it on the floor, can hit the mid-range jumper, averaging almost 30 points per game over his last five games. And he dismantled Connecticut in the quarterfinals last night. But Juan Summers really trying to front Joe Alexander inside, but Alexander much too quick off the bounce, but plenty of help. It'll be interesting to see how many different Ahoyas defend Alexander. Georgetown's got a lot of big, long, athletic forwards. Hibbert taps it out of bounds. It'll go to Georgetown, the officials say. Alexander, a junior, hardly played as a freshman. I mean, hardly played the whole season. Last year, a good role player, but certainly not the key guy for West Virginia. First team all Big East this year. And the way he was playing right if the season went on another week or two, he might have won Big East Player of the Year. Well, again, I, I've watched him. Uh, this was my sixth game uh, with West Virginia. And I've watched Joe Alexander go from a guy who wasn't totally confident in his abilities to a guy who's supremely confident. He always knew he had the potential. But what he's done, according to Larry Harrison, assistant coach, under Bob Huggins, he's worked on squaring his shoulders to the basket when he turns and faces. And he's got more arc on his shot, which gives him a better chance of the ball going in. And all you need, if you're a really good player, you need a couple of them to go in to feel, hey, I got this right, and the rest will be history. Well, 12 of them went in yesterday against Connecticut, not to mention 10 free throws. Ruoff, long on the three, rebound Jonathan Wallace. 
Wallace and Nichols, two of the steadiest, soundest point guards in the Big East. Layup for DeJuan Summers. Good matchup, too. Nichols and Wallace, two clever, savvy point guards. Alexander off the gamble by Summers. The open man, Ruoff. Rebound, Hoyas. Austin Freeman bangs down a three. Not quite raining threes like it did yesterday, but for West Virginia, the sky's, sky's cloudy. Timeout, Bob Huggins in the face of Alex Ruoff. The Hoyas with an early four-point lead. Georgetown by four early. They set a school record with 17 threes yesterday against Villanova. They've got an early one here tonight, courtesy of Austin Freeman. Well, that was kind of in a secondary break situation. And Freeman just gets to the wing. Had a terrific game against Louisville to clinch the regular season championship for Georgetown. Alexander comes free off the Smolligan screen. Dewan Summers again. Look at that. Look at that, look Take at that, that move. Ooh. Holy cow. That's what you call respect. The fact that Summers did almost break his ankle on that little shake and bake, but they know how quick Joe Alexander can get to the basket. Summers, a terrific talent in his own right, wound up in the seat of his pants about eight feet away from Alexander. Joe Alexander, terrific athlete, terrific player. Well, buckle up your seatbelts if you're watching that. <laughs> Don't fall out of your chair. No ordinary Joe. From far away to back here in the mortgage hat, we'll tell you about how Alexander got where he is today. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Aero Postal. Make it happen. And in part by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at NBUSA.com. And Subway. Subway celebrates Jared's 10th anniversary of losing 245 pounds. Subway, eat fresh. Welcome back to the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York City. Semi-final action for the Big East Championship, Georgetown, in West Virginia by two early. More on Joe Alexander right now. Who is this guy? First team all Big East selection. Was born in Taiwan. Spent a total of eight years of his childhood in China, Taiwan, and Japan. Gained 20 pounds since last year and has turned himself into an unbelievable talent. For more, here's Doris Burke. Well, an unusual route to college basketball stardom. The 20 pounds was not as a result of the chocolate he ate because his father worked for the Nestle Corporation. That is why he spent his time overseas. He did have an opportunity to play basketball. He is surrounded here by his two brothers. I asked him what the competition was like. He said it was basically like a high school program that Nike ran over there, guys. And I said, did you get to uh, have any fringe benefits as a result of your dad's work? He said, oh yeah, lots of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's a young man, Doris, when he came out of high school and not highly recruited at all. Actually, went to Hargrave Military Academy for a year of prep school. Didn't even start there. Was not a big-time recruit, but has grown exponentially over the last couple of years in terms of his game. And that's why all the talk about blue chippers, you know, guys are top ten players. It really comes down to proving it, and people develop along their own lines. Roy Hibbert developing the outside shot. Steps out and knocks down the three. He's only taken three threes this year, and he's made all three of them. That's right. Everybody's got their own timeline. Roy Hibbert decides he's going to be a long-range shooter in a couple of years. It's just barely, <laughs> barely coming up. Remember, one of his threes earlier this season beat UConn right at the end of regulation. Deshaun Butler called for the foul. Well, the touch that he has has a lot to do with the form, and it's taken him a while to develop it, but that's pretty good form for a guy his size and his length with the follow-through and everything. And was no hesitation. There was no hesitation. Jamie Smolligan's down to the bench with two fouls, so Alexander is guarding Hibbert right now. Wellington Smith is in, and he's checking Patrick Ewing Jr. A surprise, really, that they didn't go to uh, Stone, although Alexander does a nice job of holding his position right now. You got to protect this guy if you're Bob Huggins. Well, if you're a Connecticut fan, shield your eyes. You'll remember this three from earlier this season by Roy Hibbert. Five seconds left in regulation. 
Hibbert knocks it down. Georgetown beats UConn. Alexander driving by Ewing. Ruan. Hibbert got a hand on it. Nichols for three. Pretty good team basketball on the tip by Alexander to Ruoff to Nichols. Touch passes all around. Roy Hibbert slams it home. Hibbert has seven early points. He had none yesterday in the win over Villanova. Well, we said at the beginning of the telecast, he needs to be more assertive. Everybody now knows Georgetown can shoot. So they're going to fan out the defense a little more and give Hibbert an opportunity. Look at this. What a job by the big guy defending out beyond the three-point line. Jeremiah Rivers turns it over at the other end, and back come the Mountaineers. Over penetration by Rivers. Waste a terrific defensive play by Hibbert. And a touch foul on Patrick Ewing. Ewing named the Big East sixth man of the year this season. Well, John Thompson III said Roy Hibbert will be more assertive. He must be more assertive, also being more aggressive defensively. Well, again, this is one of those things you don't see often. A guy his size, look at him playing out beyond the pro three line. Good defensive stance, has his center of gravity down, and he is really bothering Smith. Hibbert sits down, Vernon Macklin comes in, a big start for Roy Hibbert and a four-point lead for the Hoyas. The winner on to the championship game tomorrow night, 9 Eastern here on ESPN. That's pretty good help by Vernon Macklin on the Alexander drive. That's what Georgetown has to do. they got to step up, meet Joe Alexander earlier on the drive, make him give it up. Alexander defended by Ewing, now the double team, good help by Wallace. Out of bounds, still belongs to West Virginia. Doris Burke with more on Roy Hibbert. Well, he is a prime example of a self-made guy. Paid the price by his conditioning. When he came into Georgetown, John Thompson, the older John Thompson II, said the big stiff. But, guys, he has paid the price conditioning-wise and both fundamental skills-wise has gone over and over. Ordinary tuck shots, drop steps, turnaround jump shots. He's got it all, Lenny. Well, I've seen him, and the up-and-unders and... The way he uses his body is terrific. The problem is, they don't get on the ball enough. Patrick Ewing is fouled on the drive to the basket. After the basket to the other end by Wellington Smith. Hibbert off to a great start. Georgetown, though, getting a battle from West Virginia up by two. ESPN Films presents Black Magic. Pearl the Pearl. Like and we want to see the Pearl. The Pearl, the Pearl. A playground legend from Philadelphia, Earl the Pearl Monroe, averaged 42 points as he led Western Salem State to the 1967 Division II Championship. 77 to 74, the final score. The Rams from Winston Salem College win it. Black Magic debuts March 16th at 9 Eastern on ESPN. And the second two-hour edition of Black Magic, Monday night, 9 Eastern, here on ESPN. Of course, Earl the Pearl's number hangs proudly here at Madison Square Garden. Well, if you want to know exactly what Earl Monroe has meant to the game of basketball, every time you see a guard come down the court with a little spin move, that's Earl Monroe. That, that spin was patented by the Pearl. So a little Torrey Jackson, a little Levance Fields. They may not know it, but they got it from the Pearl. That's right. It comes down to no one had done that prior to Earl Monroe's emergence as a player. Not just at Winston-Salem, but obviously on the NBA level. And people associate him with the New York Knicks, but they forget he was an absolutely terrific player in Baltimore with the Bullets. I don't know how he got out of Baltimore. <laughs> Patrick Ewing Jr. misses the free throw a couple of years at Indiana before transferring to Georgetown. Of course, where his dad was such a star back in the 80s. A very different player was Patrick Ewing Jr. But his own man, his own player, and if you're if you're diagramming a sixth man, Patrick Ewing Jr. is pretty close because the intensity, the hustle is off the charts for him. Yeah, it all starts with that energy. You know, when you put a guy out there, you not only want him to be good and force the other team to adjust, you want him to give your team a boost. And the sixth man award that he won for the Big East that we mentioned a little bit earlier, he's the inaugural winner, the first year of that award here in this conference. Nichols. Joe Missoula into the backcourt now for West Virginia. It'll be Missoula launching a three. Alexander taps it back out. That's one of his specialties. He's a terrific offensive rebounder and very good at tapping it back out to the guards. Well, it's pretty good defense on the floor by Georgetown. 
but no one about, able to block out. Now they have to do it all over again. The jumper over Rivers is short. And the rebound comes down to Vernon Macklin. Here come the Hoyas, led by Chris Wright, a freshman who just returned yesterday after missing a couple of months with a broken foot. Jesse Sapp for three. Well, you talk about the cohesiveness of this Georgetown team. Macklin didn't rush, even though he was down on the post, waited for everybody to get to their positions and found Sapp. He just gave him a little bit of a high sign. A career high 23 for Sapp yesterday against Villanova. Nice ball fake by Missoula, and the floater is good. Boy, he looked his defender right away from him. Joe Missoula, he's one of those guys, very underrated speed out there. He can go into another gear. Two teams, don't you think, Len, with terrific complementary players? Oh, goal for unbelievable pass right there. Just a little bit too far under the basket. Rebound of Wellington Smith, one of those role players. Here comes Missoula, one on three. And he makes the wise decision. Nichols for three. Well, the key to being a good role player is to understand your capabilities and your limitations. And you blend that in to the team concept. And once you understand that, whatever it is you do best should ultimately prevail. Four-point lead for Georgetown, the number one seed in the Big East. Out of bounds to the Hoyas. The championship game from the Big East Tournament presented by Aero Postal comes your way tomorrow night at 9 Eastern right here on ESPN. All a part of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Georgetown and West Virginia, the winner of this one against the winner of our next semifinal between Marquette and Pittsburgh. Numbers 5, 6, and 7. Yesterday knocked out, respectively, numbers 4, 3, and 2. Missoula. In and out, Jonathan Flowers into the game. Another one of those role players. Another great energy guy with the putback. And another guy that hustled down the floor despite the appearance of a made fast break. Hustled down the floor to put that one back and actually beat the big man from Georgetown down the floor. Bob Huggins very fond of Flowers and his work ethic. And you'll see him right nose to nose with whoever he's guarding all night long. Hibbert is back in there for Georgetown. Alexander's gone to the bench for West Virginia. Right, tough shot. Hibbert with the follow. He's got nine already. What a difference 24 hours makes for Roy Hibbert. Hibbert toyed with the idea of entering the NBA draft last year. His teammate, Jeff Green, did, went. Now with Seattle, Hibbert came back for his senior season. Numbers virtually identical to those of a year ago. Pass knocked away. Georgetown ball. Right, looking pretty comfortable for a guy who's hardly played. Give him an assist. The big guy is having a field day at the expense of the Mountaineers. Uh, particularly Wellington Smith, who just seems lost. He's not a center. So playing in that paint in the middle may be foreign territory for him. And Roy Hibbert has run around him twice now as Smith has gone to help and taken his eyes off the big fella. Alexander will come back in. Remember, Small again, the starting center for West Virginia, has got two fouls. Rebound sack. Sap penetrates, and it goes. Bob Huggins will use another timeout. We're going to take a look right here at the bad end. Look how far Roy Hibbert allows himself to be pushed off the block. That's the bad. But the good is as Smith loses contact with Hibbert, that Hibbert gets to the front of the rim. We're going to take a look right here again. Wellington Smith has no idea where Roy Hibbert is. Hibbert runs down the middle of the floor and calls for the ball. He just has to be more consistent in his assertiveness on the offensive end. Didn't score last night. 11 already tonight. Nine since Small going to went to the bench with his second foul. Alexander is coming back in and maybe he will be charged with trying to guard Roy Hibbert again. But even that's not an ideal matchup for Bob Huggins and West Virginia.
ESPN's coverage of Championship Week continues tomorrow afternoon with both semifinals from the ACC tournament. Virginia Tech with a pivotal win over Miami today will take on the number one team in the nation, North Carolina. And then the winner of Clemson and BC will take on the winner of Duke, Georgia Tech. Those games happening tonight. The ACC semifinals are part of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods here on ESPN tomorrow afternoon. Boy, made that Virginia Tech win so big. A lot of talk about them being on the bubble, and so is Miami. And it was head-to-head -head competition. Virginia Tech wins, and the tournament selection committee has said head-to-head -head competition means a lot. Missoula comes up empty on the drive. Chris right back the other way for Georgetown. The Hoyas one-point winners over the Mountaineers in Morgantown during the regular season. And Butler attempting to push Roy Hibbert off the block. Hibbert sometimes a willing accomplice in people pushing him off. Now you have Joe Alexander guarding him. And it's almost like Roy Hibbert more comfortable at the high post than down low. Wallace for three. And Alexander the rebound. He gets tied up by Jesse Sack. Good play by Sack. A timeout on the floor. Roy Hibbert is off to a great start. Trying to lead the Hoyas into the championship game. Another night, another story. That's how this show goes. You want reality TV? You want reality TV? Here it is. You want reality TV? Here it is. East on ESPN. That's where it lives. Center right now. Fine suspensions handed down for the Yankees Rays brawl. Kelly Duncan, Melky Cabrera, and Johnny Gomes all getting punished. Cabrera and Duncan will sit for three games. Gomes getting a couple. Bruce Bowen, he is going to sit too and end his 500 game streak, which was the longest active one in the NBA. Suspended for kicking at Chris Paul. Sports Center on ESPN News at 11 Eastern. Of course, you can always stay current with ESPN News. Henry's back here in New York City. Joe Alexander in West Virginia with an uphill battle early against Georgetown. They are trailing by eight. And Alexander, uh, one of the stars in the Big East Conference, held in check so far tonight. Dan Schulman, Lynn Elmore, Doris Burke, semifinal action for the Big East Championship. Presented by Aero Postal. A spot in the championship game tomorrow is at stake here tonight. Alexander, 34. 34 yesterday against UConn. A career high. The two points he has tonight were memorable with a great move. An ankle breaker on Dewan Summers, but he's missed his last three shots. And now, again, he's having to defend Roy Hibbert because Jamie Small, again, the starting center for the Mountaineers, has two fouls. Hibbert. The assertive Roy Hibbert came to the garden tonight, Lenny. He certainly did, and when Doris explained about this young man's work ethic and the fact he's got all these different moves, that was just one of a number of moves he's got in his little trick bag. Hibbert is at his average already with 13 points, and Smolligan, two fouls and all, is going to come back into the game. Well, you have to. You've got to get somebody who's more custom playing somebody in the pivot, and also a little bit bigger and stronger. But Roy Hibbert, with that footwork, I don't care, you know, who you put on her. It's difficult to stop. The fadeaway by Alexander. He's one for five early tonight. Deshaun Butler, a three for the Mountaineers. They needed that. It snaps an 8-0 run for the Hoyas. Butler, the guy with the back-to-back 17-point games already in this tournament. Remember, this is the third game in as many days for West Virginia. Just the second in a row for Georgetown. They had a first-round bomb. Alexander still on Hibbert until the next whistle. Well, I like the idea that Georgetown is not force-feeding Roy Hibbert, but by the same token, that was a difficult possession right there. Too much dribble by Jesse Sapp. He wasn't looking anywhere. And West Virginia lets a three-on-one slip away at the other end. One of the most important elements of post play is using footwork, and here, a little bit of Joe Alexander in Roy Hibbert from the top of the key. The dribble, the spin, and the nice left-handed hook. Roy Hibbert very adept using both hands. Alexander now on Summers. Smalligan back into the game on Hibbert. And Smalligan will play a different brand. Joe Alexander tried to use his quickness to guard Roy Hibbert. And Jamie Smalligan is trying to use brute force. 
David also a good passer, as you mentioned, Lenny. Likes to come out up top and facilitate the offense as well. Wallace back into the game for Georgetown. Got around Ruoff. Followed his miss. Hibbert kicks it back out. Freeman, what a load he is with that body as a freshman, huh? Austin Freeman playing with a lot of confidence. We mentioned before, heroics in the Louisville game really blending in. And he's another guy that you consider a role player. You know, he'll make the most of the opportunities given to him, but right now he's primarily a defensive player, a guy that's going to move the ball. Double team on Butler. Now he spins into the lane and draws the foul. Nine-point lead for Georgetown here in the always busy New York City with one of the big events this week in this town year after year, the Big East Championship. All right, guys, looking forward to the halftime report. Of course, to beat Georgetown is a tall task for West Virginia. Georgetown has had an outstanding season, universally considered one of the top ten teams in the country all season long. The regular season champs in the Big East try to defend their tournament championship here in the Big East. They've won every close game they've been in this year and an outstanding defensive team led by the anchor in the middle, Roy Hibbert. Doris Burke has more. Well, in fact, 6-0, and Dan, and games decided by three points or less. They pulled out a couple of those late there were a couple of controversial whistles down the stretch of those games but this is a Georgetown team very much aware that people various pundits have said they are lucky Jesse Sapp in this morning's Washington Post said we're overlooked a lot they question our wins they question our ability they question our guard play they question everything I think we answer a lot of questions but they still find a way for more questions guys they are motivated who, who are they well I was just gonna <laughs> say who's questioning the guard play who's questioning the fact that they're the number one team in the nation as far as playing defense not only field goal percentage defense top five in points allowed who's questioning all of that these, these guys have proven themselves but you know as well as anybody even if they don't exist if a coach can oh yeah can create a they then it might help to spur a team on a chip on their shoulders not a bad thing another flag call to rally around Looks like West Virginia dropped into the zone on that trip. 26-17, a low-scoring first half. Georgetown up nine. Roy Hibbert picked up a foul right before that last timeout. His second, he's on the bench, and he's been a force tonight with 13 points already. Alexander, he's getting good looks, as he always seems to. They're not dropping so far tonight. Yeah, I don't think he's got his mechanics in order as he has in the past. Georgetown's got its mechanics in order. Freeman to Macklin, largest lead of the night for the Hoyas. Well, they are sharing the ball beautifully just as they did yesterday when they had, get this, 25 assists on 28 field goals. The guys like Patrick Ewing Jr. are perfectly suited to play Joe Alexander. Same size, good athleticism, intelligent approach to the, the defensive side, and willing to move their feet. Another Hoya steal. Jeremiah Rivers, son of Celtics coach Doc. Outstanding defender. Ewing off to Macklin. Counting. <laughs> Well, we talked about the improvement of Joe Alexander and the keys to it, not only the confidence, but also from a mechanic standpoint, watch his right shoulder. We talked about being able to square up. He needs to turn that shoulder around a little bit more in order to be perfectly square to that basket. And I think on a couple of shots, we've seen him do that reverse pivot, if you will, and not get fully square. And if we had a way to compare him over the last couple of games, his shots to this shot, you'd probably see him face the basket more and present himself. Macklin misses the free throw. He's now 8 of 40 from the line this year. But he picks up the two points on the dunk. The second assist of the night for Ewing, who had a career-high seven assists against Villanova yesterday. Austin Freeman thought he got all ball on that slap, but he's going to get called for the foul. He got something because we heard it from over here. <laughs> Those spikes uh, down around the baskets are working fine tonight, guys. That looked pretty good. Looked like, you know, the type of steals we, we gave Marquette so much credit for for being so good at the strip steal. 
Deshaun Butler back close to home, a 6'7 sophomore from Newark. We have so many players on all of the teams in the Big East come from the, the New York City area, New Jersey area, so such a big deal for so many of them to come play in the Garden. And West Virginia comes into this game having won five in a row in this building. They won the postseason NIT under then coach John Beeline last year, so that was two games here. They won against St. John's in the regular season here this year, and then already two wins in this tournament this week. So it is just another team that's staking claim to the Garden being home. <laughs> well, Pittsburgh's got practically got this is our house written across the front of their uniforms, blocked from behind by Alexander. And he, and he blocked it without even leaving the floor. Yeah. Juan Summers will come back in. Pittsburgh in our next semifinal tonight against Marquette. Pittsburgh over Louisville in overtime last night. Marquette impressive in the win over Notre Dame. Now as active as Roy Hibbert had been throughout most of this half before he sat down, his absence proven to be a little bit of an issue right now for Georgetown. Offense doesn't seem to be moving as smoothly. With poised by Chris Wright to reset number four, the McDonald's All-American, a freshman, as was Austin Freeman. Wallace inside, he'll bring it back out. They got a ton of time on the clock, right into traffic, and he turns it over. Ruoff, a guy that West Virginia desperately needs to knock down some outside shots. Alexander knocks one down. That way he got his numbers facing the hoop. And when that happens, you know you're square. You know, we talk about the lost start of the mid-range jumper. Does anybody in the country make more mid-range jumpers than Joe Alexander? Well, I'll tell you what. You can make a living off of being accurate for mid-range. You don't necessarily have to be a three-point shooter or a great dunker. Although DeJuan Summers says, you know what? doesn't hurt. Roy Hibbert likes what he sees from the bench. Every once in a while. <laughs> Summers of talent, 6'8", 240, 11 and a half points per game, can shoot the three. And play pretty good defense right now. I think one of the reasons that Alexander's been forced to rush a little bit is not only the athleticism of the Georgetown defenders, but also the way they're defending, being smart, bodying up, and getting a hand in the passing lane, something that the Connecticut inexperienced defenders weren't doing. John Thompson the third will call a timeout with 31 seconds left in the first half. 33-21 Georgetown, the winner of this game against the winner of our next semifinal between Marquette and Pittsburgh in the championship game tomorrow night. It's the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal, all a part of Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Let's not undersell Georgetown's defense and how important that is against Joe Alexander. Again, we talked about him rushing. There was a hand in the passing lane. Now getting up and holding position, you see the double team come across, you know, obviously he's demonstrating the strip steal and then just playing pretty physical with him. And it forces him to kind of make a quick turn and never really gets squared up. And I think Bob Huggins trying to remind him of those mechanics, the things that got him those gaudy numbers over the last five games. 29.8 points per game in the last five. Jim Calhoun, who Alexander torched for 34 yesterday, said, you know what, they should have known this was coming. He got 32 against them just a couple of weeks ago. He had equally as big a game against the very same team he did it to just a couple of weeks ago. Well, what he's done now is he's awakened everyone to his massive talents, and he's also made believers out of opponents' defenses, and Georgetown certainly have become believers the way they focused on throwing a blanket on Joe Alexander. A two-second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Ewing from the corner, kept alive by Summers. Knocked away by Ruoff. West Virginia's got a couple of seconds. And they cannot get a shot off as a frustrating first half comes to a close for West Virginia. But what a first half it was for Roy Hibbert despite two fouls. 13 points, 13 more than he had last night. Let's go back to the studio now and join Reese Davis for the Cisco Halftime Report. Another night, another story. That's how this show goes. You want reality TV? You want reality TV? You want reality TV? Once the whistle blows, tip off, no fear it You want reality TV? You want reality TV? The Big East on ESPN, that's where it lives.
Welcome back to New York City. Semifinal number one here for the Big East. It is Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. And we welcome you back to the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal inside a sold-out Madison Square Garden with a number one seed in the Big East, Georgetown. A 12-point lead on West Virginia. Atlanta Case of the big guy for Georgetown having a terrific first half. Well, he's become more assertive as opposed to yesterday against Villanova. Moving to the spots, his teammates are looking for him, and he's showing that he's a player on offense with some authority. And Joe Alexander, by contrast, not really able to get himself on track. He's the focal point of the best defense in the nation, and he's been struggling really to get his shot off. One really good move, but the rest of the time, he's been faced with double teams, guys coming from behind as well as guys thwarting him by getting his hands up in the air. Alexander with 56 points in his first two games of the Big East Championship, just four tonight. Hibbert shot out yesterday against Villanova. Foul trouble, did not score a point. 13 first half points, and it bears repeating, 11 of them came when Jamie Smalligan was not in the game. Smalligan is the starting center for West Virginia, picked up two quick fouls, and that's when Hibbert really went off. Summers again defending Alexander. They are making him work for his looks here tonight. Well, again, a lot of hands in the passing lane so that it prevents him from getting the ball where he really wants it, and then forcing him into one-on-one -on -one moves with fadeaway jump shots. That's what the defense wants Joe Alexander to do. And whether it's Summers, Macklin, or Ewing, Georgetown has three options about Alexander's size who can defend him. Hibbert, the offensive rebound. Wallace, a clean look. And Georgetown's all-time leader in threes makes it a 15-point game. And again, it's the movement by Roy Hibbert, not just playing stationary basketball. It's really getting him opportunities, the offensive rebound, as well as the score. Ruoff for three. Alex Ruoff, by far the best shooter West Virginia has as we bring in Doris Burke. Guys, about an hour before the game, I asked Coach Huggins about the third game in three nights. He did express some concern and would adjust defensively. So when I asked him at the half, if being out-rebounded by nine and only shooting 34% had to do with fatigue, he said, I don't think so. He said, we were beating up the floor in the second and third possessions of the game. He was really disappointed in their effort. I asked him about Hibbert. He said, we got to run with him. Simply run with him and make it hard for him, guys. Well, he's not going to like how easily Hibbert got the offensive rebound on his miss right there, Lenny. Well, again, he's continually moving, makes it hard on Small again to really block him out. Butler knocked down a couple of threes in the first half. Nichols will knock one down for the Mountaineers. And that's exactly what West Virginia needs. Joe Alexander having a difficult time offensively, but it doesn't mean that the rest of his teammates can't support him. They start to have some luck out there, and suddenly Georgetown has to focus on more than Alexander. The backdoor cut. The much discussed. Doesn't happen all that often, but they do use some of the Princeton elements, and it is still pretty to watch. Alexander. Hibbert got his hands in there. Rue off the save. Butler driving. Tough one off the glass and good. Well, Deshaun Butler, not only can he knock down threes, but off the bounce. Nice job of avoiding Roy Hibbert's outstretched arm. The high score in the game for the Mountaineers with 10. Alexander still with just four. You take a look at Georgetown, so methodical, and it helps that Roy Hibbert's able to play out on the floor as well as play in the post. Good passer. Small again, reaches around, and a steal for West Virginia. Nichols wide open. His second three in a row. Third of the night for Garris Nichols. Here come the Mountaineers. That'll go a long way in dissuading Georgetown from double-teaming Joe Alexander. Nichols keeping the defense honest. West Virginia making a move. Alexander struggling. Nichols draining a couple of threes. Tonight's game is also available in high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. Welcome back to New York City, back inside of Madison Square Garden. First whistle of the second half gives us finally a chance to look at the first half stats tonight, presented by Guinness. Georgetown shooting very well. Of course, Hibbert, a lot of that right around the rim. 
dominating on the glass. Again, a great assist to field goal ratio points in the paint. A terrific first half for the Hoyas, but the Mountaineers, Leonard, making some noise here in the second half. Well, again, Bob Huggins would obviously be very pleased without watching this game. If you told him they'd shoot 35 percent, Alexander struggling. And they're just down 10 and within striking distance. But if Roy Hibbert continues to be that aggressive, getting to the front of the rim for those high percentage shots, it's going to be a long evening. Well, Hibbert scores again. What's the common denominator? Smalligan's not in the game. He just sat down at that last whistle. Alexander. He's starting to get back in sync. Squaring up, getting some arc on that shot. And certainly that's going to help him with his confidence. Georgetown's got to do a better job of denying him. And here's Alexander trying to front Roy Hibbert. Not an easy job. Alexander at 6'8", Hibbert at 7'2". Wallace running around the screen. Takes the feed from Sat. Still a dozen on the shot clock. Wallace, an NBA range three. When you talk about drawing range. The arc on Jonathan Wallace's shot. Scrapes the bottom of the clock. <laughs> Outstanding numbers for the former walk-on out of Harvest, Alabama, who has turned himself into a, a terrific college player. Nichols could not handle the pass, otherwise he was looking for the three. Alexander takes the bump and will go to the line. As we go to a timeout, Georgetown leading West Virginia by 11. We'll check out one of the staples of the Georgetown offense, the backdoor cut, when we return. Back here at Madison Square Garden, championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods, an 11-point lead for the Hoyas over the Mountaineers, 15-19 to go in the second half. Doris Burke taking us back door inside the play. Well, you liked it so much, we're going to show it to you again. And anytime your teammate dribbles at you in the Georgetown offense, it's a signal for Dewan Summers here to go back door. So Jesse Sapp is going to reverse dribble. And he's like a quarterback. He's almost throwing it to a spot, Lenny, more than he is to a person. Well, I tell you, one of the other characteristics of that back door is when you're dribbling towards the defender, if the defender now all of a sudden takes his eye off of his man and looks at the ball, that's the other signal to kick it in back door gear. John Thompson the third, of course, played at Princeton, an assistant coach at Princeton, so he brings elements of the Princeton offense to Georgetown. Alexander with the line for the Mountaineers as we come out of the timeout. Hibbert in the game for Georgetown. Smalligan on the bench for West Virginia. Alexander Jr., a physical education major. Again, a, a guy who hardly played as a freshman. His entire freshman year, he played 36 minutes. He played about that much yesterday. And a first-team All-Big East performer, he's now got eight. Well, it just goes to show you, as I mentioned before, everybody develops along their own timeline. Uh, there was no mistaking, though, his athletic ability. And I think when Bob Huggins came to this program and put these guys on a strength and conditioning program, you can take a look at them now as opposed to last year. And all of these guys thicker, stronger, and probably more confident. Hibbert misses the left-handed tap, and back come the Mountaineers. They've got it down to single digits. The winner going to the championship game tomorrow night against the winner of our next semifinal between Marquette and Pittsburgh. Both of whom should be arriving any time here at the Garden. The Golden Eagles against the Panthers. you got to like the Georgetown defense when Alexander gets it, and he looks to put it on the floor to drive. They pinch in to take away the driving lanes and force him to give it up. Ruoff from the corner. They're paying a lot of attention to Alexander, and other guys are open as a result. That's why it's a team game. One guy is not going to win it for you on a consistent basis. Other people have to contribute. West Virginia shot 35% of the first half land. They're 6 out of 7 here in the second half. Into the hands of Ewing. Alexander trying to defend Hibbert right around him. Jump hook in. Nice move by Hibbert again. As confident and assertive Len as perhaps he has been all season. And it's one thing to have a guy at his side just locked in the post making a singular move. And it's another thing with a guy with that kind of mobility be able to put it on the floor and escape the defense. And I'm surprised he doesn't do it 
every single game. Yeah. And I think you're not you're not the only guy who's surprised if he could do it every single game. The accolades for him would be even greater than they are. And you take a look at the defense of Joe Alexander, the front hands in the passing lane, which is so important. And then Ruoff obviously is the one who's the beneficiary of people focusing on Alexander trying to double him. Patrick Ewing commits a foul, trying to guard Joe Alexander. I guess the message from Georgetown is Alexander is not going to beat us. Somebody else has to. Well, the guy has scored 149 points in his last five games coming into, into this one. Relatively quiet tonight with eight, but Butler's got ten. Nichols has got nine. Ruoff's hit a couple of threes. They do have other weapons. Jeremiah Rivers called for the foul. And they're absolutely starting to exercise those options. Alex Ruoff being the main guy right now. And here he is just isolated on Jeremiah Rivers. Hibbert comes over a little bit too late. But you go away from Joe Alexander for a while. And you know the defense is loaded up on him. Let some other guys get in the rhythm. ESPN's coverage of Championship Week continues tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, from right here at the Garden in New York. The winner of this game against the winner of the next semifinal between Marquette and Pittsburgh. The Big East Championship presented by Aeropostale, a part of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods on ESPN. Georgetown has won seven Big East Tournament Championships, the most of any school in the league. West Virginia has never won one. Hibbert follows his miss and a goal 10 on Wellington Smith. 21 points for Roy Hibbert. Little contact under the boards as West Virginia attempted to take the charge. Take a look right there. And that kind of contact, again, it had to affect the shot. It's either a charge or a block. And there's so much contact, I'm surprised the whistle's not blown. But see that often enough, maybe that's the training. A tough shot from Deshaun Butler. And West Virginia not going away. Remember, they lost by only one to the Hoyas during the regular season. Granted, that was in Morgantown. But they've got some confidence playing against the top seed of the conference. Alexander continues to defend Hibbert. Alexander the foul. And that's really the risk that Bob Huggins is taking right now. Got your best player who's trying to get on track offensively. And then you give him the most difficult defensive assignment. He's got a better option defensively in Jamie Smalligan. But if we put Smalligan in, he loses Wellington Smith, who gives him things that Smalligan doesn't. So it's a... Kind of a rock and a hard place right now for Bob Huggins. But right now you have to make a decision as to what you want to attack right now. With Wellington Smith in there, that means that, you know, you want to put points on the board. You want to create maybe some mismatches on your offensive end. Because defensively, Smith is not a center, doesn't understand how to play defense in that paint. And we saw that a couple of times in the first half. So there's a liability there. And now you got to put Joe Alexander on Roy Hibbert, and you run the risk of getting him in foul trouble. Right, as we mentioned in the first half, missed the entire conference regular season. With a broken bone in his foot, this is a couple of free throws here, but he gives them an added dimension in the backcourt, a guy who can put the ball on the deck and get by you, plays at a different pace than some of the other more deliberate Hoyas. And just a freshman, he's really going to grow into the role. Remember, Jonathan Wallace is a senior. Nichols going side to side, unable to get around right. Ruoff will get a clean look. Here come the Mountaineers. And by going away from Joe Alexander and getting other guys established, he's created confidence in guys like Alex Ruoff. Ruoff, a guy who was born in Cincinnati, grew up a Bearcats fan back when Bob Huggins was coaching there. Now, ironically, he plays for him at West Virginia. A block by Alexander. Boy, did he get up on that one? The confidence building for West Virginia. Hibbert the rebound. Same as the play on the other end. Contact affecting the shot. Block or charge. No call. Freeman with a layup at the other end. Georgetown up by six. And West Virginia screaming for some kind of call. And I'm sure they're asking for a foul. What a difference a half makes. West Virginia's got more points this half in less than nine minutes than they had in the entire first half. 
Baseline drive, Butler. Oh, oh Hibbert was waiting for him. And we've got a foul against Chris Wright, or a technical foul. Ed Corbett with a call. The other Hoyas trying to figure out exactly what it was for. Was it a technical or a personal? We will sort it out when we come back from the break. West Virginia making a run, getting hot from the outside. But the Hoyas are up by six. Freeman playing strong for Georgetown. Won the SEC West, but they're down to Alabama by seven. Boy, no shortage of uh, intrigue around the country and no shortage of intrigue here tonight in New York City. Let's take another look at this play. Wellington Smith falls on top of Chris Wright. Smith was called for a personal foul. Chris Wright was called for an unsportsmanlike, taunting, technical foul. Ed Corbett, the official, is right there in front of the play. So a personal on West Virginia, a technical on Georgetown, and that's why Alex Ruoff is at the line right now for the Mountaineers. That was a tough situation. Obviously, Chris Wright has to maintain his poise. Wellington Smith just hustling. He fouled him, but it's nothing but a hustle play. No ill intent. And Chris Wright has just got to maintain his calm. He's been out for 18 games. And play resumes at the point of interruption, so it is Georgetown ball with a four-point lead. Hoyas had a double-digit lead for a long time. West Virginia's gotten hot here in the second half, and they've gotten right back into the game. I was going to say, right been out for 18 games. You know, you got to get your game poised. you got your game temperament together. In a big game like this, the last thing you want to do is get called for something you say. Sack. Count the bucket and a blocking foul on Missoula. And Sapp is a low down in the block. Sapp just bullying his way. I don't know how Missoula could even keep his balance. Sapp using that right shoulder and the right arm, creating it. Obviously, the officials thought that the contact initiated by Sapp wasn't a foul, and certainly that Missoula did foul. Bob Huggins just hollered at Missoula, get around the defender, get around him. Sapp is just too big for Missoula to be playing behind him. Now you can try and get around him, but Sapp makes himself wide and makes it difficult to do that. Right now, Wallace is guarding Alexander. It'll be Ruoff. He's had the hot hand. Look at the hops on Wellington Smith. Well, we've said it over and over. Wellington Smith, just like Joe Alexander, has tremendous potential. Unlike Alexander, hasn't really put it together yet. Wallace with a foul from behind. That will be the sixth team foul on Georgetown already here in the second half. And both Alexander and Smith, the comparisons have to do with the athleticism. Alexander's made himself a jump shooter. Smith has work to do. And forgive me, the fifth team foul committed by the Hoyas here in the second half as we near the midway point. Six-point lead. Georgetown in that matchup, 2-3 zone. Making sure that they make contact, keep hand contact with the high post and particularly with Joe Alexander. The jumper from the elbow a little strong. Sapp with a rebound in traffic. Georgetown never in a rush. Sapp the miss. Hibbert another offensive rebound. Rivers open for three off the corner of the backboard. Alexander's got it for the Mountaineers. Roy Hibberland has eight offensive rebounds already tonight. Alexander out of control. Numbers for the Hoyas. Sapp was expecting the whistle. Hibbert follows up. Man, oh man. I said at the beginning of telecast playing with that championship air. I don't know, Jesse Sapp feels like he can get anything up there because his boys are going to go retrieve it. The lead up to eight as Bob Huggins calls a timeout. We're at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Semi-final number one from the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. The number one seed in the conference, Georgetown, against the number five seed, West Virginia, along with Len Elmore and Doris Burke. I'm Dan Schulman. The winner will take on the winner of Pittsburgh and Marquette. Our next semi tonight in the championship tomorrow night, the Mountaineers, Len, hearkening back to the beeline days, getting back in this game in the second half with three.
three. Well, playing a, a little more intelligently, using Alexander as the decoy and moving the ball around until they hit the open man as Georgetown continues to shift their focus to Alexander when the ball's on his side. Time now for tonight's Subway Fresh Fact. Only one team in the history of this tournament has won the Big East Championship playing on four consecutive days. In other words, without a bye. Now, three of the four teams still going right now did not have the benefit of a bye. So at least one of them will have the opportunity to play for the championship. Georgetown got a bye. West Virginia, Marquette, and Pittsburgh all played on Wednesday. Alexander is on the bench. As is Hibbert. And you look at that Georgetown defense. They communicate. They give each other room to slide, to get over the top. They help on the drive. Look how long it takes West Virginia to get any type of decent look. Ruoff for three. And Butler was out of bounds, says Jim Haney. It'll be Georgetown ball. That's a tremendous defensive sequence by Georgetown. None of it vertical, all horizontal, all moving your feet, sliding, communicating, getting through screens, getting over top when necessary. And they forced West Virginia to take a long shot with the shot clock running down. We saw assistant coach Billy Hahn with an earful for Joe Alexander, who waits for his opportunity to come back in. Rivers knocks down the jumper. He's a tenacious defender, not known for his jump shot. But the lead is back out to 10 now for the Hoyas. And Dad Doc would be here tonight, except the Celtics are playing, and they're playing again tomorrow night as well. You see the switching right there, keeping Patrick Ewing Jr. at the top. And it all comes down to communication. West Virginia got it down to four. Georgetown's got it back out to ten. All threes right now for West Virginia. They've missed two in a row. Summers leaks out. Well, the long shots many times turn into transition points for the opposition. West Virginia trying to get high percentage shots. But again, Georgetown, sticky D. All of a sudden, an 8-0 run for the Hoyas. The lead is a dozen. And a hold on Patrick Ewing Jr. to take us to the under-8 timeout. John Thompson the third has to like what he sees defensively. And to make the most of a chance to run Summers with a slam at the other end. Semi-final number two is not far away. Sam Young and the Panthers are in the house. Over the top seed, Xavier by 10. That would be a big win for St. Joe's, still harboring hopes, Reese, as you know, of getting it at large to the NCAA if they can't run the table in the A-10. Time now for tonight's Valvoline game track with Georgetown leading by 12. Joe Alexander held in check most of the night. Roy Hibbert having one of the best nights of his career, and that's not a misprint. Points in the paint, 38-8 to for the Hoyas. Well, yesterday, Georgetown only had 18 points in the paint, albeit they hit 17-3. Yeah. But what that demonstrates is how tough Georgetown can be going forward in the NCAA tournament. They can play any kind of game. If you're going to take away the inside, they can beat you outside. If you flare out and try to cover the shooters, they've got a Roy Hibbert inside that can dominate. The Hoyas won the Big East regular season and tournament championship a year ago. It advanced to the Final Four before losing to Ohio State. Winners of the regular season at Big East Championship again this year with a last weekend win over Louisville, trying to defend their tournament championship and trying to get at least as far as they did a year ago. The foul on Alexander. They lost a terrific player in Jeff Green, an undeniably great player, Big East player of the year. Everybody else back and a year older and wiser. And the additions of Austin Freeman and Chris Wright, do the Hoyas have a chance to be as good, if not a little bit better than last year at the end of the day? What I would say, again, demonstrating the type of versatility that they have and the ability to play any style of basketball where necessary I'd say yes they certainly do Jeff Green gave them a certain dynamic quality of passing go-to guy etc and I think that's still up in the air as far as who that go-to guy is for Georgetown this guy would be a pretty good pretty good candidate for it but in the end as a team they've got tremendous balance and obviously they play together
Tonight, the go-to guy has been the seven-foot-two-inch senior in the middle out of Adelphi, Maryland, Roy Hibbert. Twenty-three points and twelve rebounds. Ten of them offensive rebounds. Sixth team foul, so Georgetown will take it out of bounds. What a difference a day makes for Roy Hibbert. Wellington Smith defending Hibbert Alexander was on sap. Ewing is open. Knocks down the jumper. He's got a little more offensive game than people give him credit for. Now remember I said about understanding your role, limitations and capabilities. Yeah, he's, he's got some game, and when he gets the shot that he wants, when he's in a position where he can succeed, he will. And you just don't want to ask him to do more than he's capable of doing, and that's why he fits in with this team so very well. Wellington Smith shaken up momentarily, and it looks like Smalligan is going to come back into the game for him. Georgetown on a 10-0 run right now. For more on Mr. Ewing, let's bring in Ms. Burke. Well, his mom, Sharon Campbell, was clearly concerned about him when he decided to transfer from Indiana to Georgetown. But he said, you know what? It wasn't something I wanted to do at first either, guys. But I finally realized during my time at Indiana that the pressure would be there regardless. My name wasn't changing, even if I changed institutions. He really has handled himself incredibly well, keeping away from comparisons with his father because he's an entirely different player, guys. And a good one at that. He's been a real help for the Hoyas the last couple of years as Sapp gets the bounce. Georgetown on a 12 to nothing run here, and the lead is out to 16. Georgetown executing their half court offense extraordinarily well. And on the defense, just taking West Virginia out of their sets. Quicker to the loose balls, quicker down the court. Missoula the rebound on the Summers miss and just stifling defense most of the night. Oh! Now Alexander's going back to shooting that flat ball again. Trying to make things happen. Maybe trying a little bit too hard. Alexander now just 3 of 13 tonight. Hibbert is held and strong enough to finish. <laughs> And here's where the fatigue sets in. When you're playing even or you're ahead, you don't feel tired. It's when you're down, the clock is starting to run against you, and you know you have to have the energy to try to come back. And West Virginia is starting to slump those shoulders now, feeling the effects of third game in three nights. And Roy Hibbert, what's gotten into him? <laughs> If he knocks down the free throw, he matches a career high. He said last season against Cincinnati. 12 out of 17, 13 rebounds, 10 of them offensive. 25 points, two blocks. Well, the thing I was remarking at is the fact that he's showing some, some uh, demonstrations, some heart. Remember that defensive possession. In the, in the first half when he was out defending a perimeter player out beyond the three-point line. Yeah, normally he doesn't demonstrate after, you know, the success that he's had in a mild manner. But right now, he's in it emotionally, and that's what you need. Bring all of that talent out of that young man because he's got a world of it. They have been challenged by his coach, and again, the Hoyas, as Doris told us earlier, playing with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, feeling that... They, whoever they are, are disrespecting this team a little bit, saying perhaps they've been fortunate to win all those close games. And you know, how good is this team? Do we really know how good this team is? They're awfully good here tonight. Well, when they say they're fortunate to win six games that are close, one game you're fortunate. The rest of them, you know how to win close games. The Pittsburgh, UConn, Syracuse, West Virginia in close games. Only four losses this season. Georgetown 26 and 4 on the season. 15 and 3 in the Big East. Summers behind the back. A little bit short. Sap got it. And as I said, I think the effects of the third game in three nights now starting to bother West Virginia a half step too slow to the ball a 16 nothing run for Georgetown after West Virginia closed within four 
And as I said, you don't feel tired when you're in the game or you're winning. But Roy Hibbert taking care of that. He's starting to wear West Virginia out and wear him down with what he's been able to do in the paint. And just a tremendous array of moves we've seen, using his body well, moving without it, crashing the offensive glass, running the floor. I mean, you've seen just about everything you would expect out of a big man. So last night, as we revisit our Star Watch, Joe Alexander goes for 34 against UConn. He's got nine tonight. Hibbert, the donut last night, or yesterday afternoon against Villanova, he's got 25. They believe in Roy tonight. The Hoya fans who have come north here to New York City for what they hope is going to be another championship weekend. Well, both of these guys will learn, as they probably will learn in life. Someday you're in the nail, and someday you're in a hammer. That's right. <laughs> and tonight, Hibbert has been the hammer for the Hoyas. 20-point lead, 3.35 to go. Marquette and Pittsburgh in semifinal number two tonight here on ESPN. And going back to Joe Alexander, it is tough when you are the focal point of the number one defensive team in America. And he's got to understand that. He's got to play with his team. Not necessarily try to force the issue. Let the game come to him, but use himself as a decoy. Alexander knocks down the two, and it's not like he's been a focal point for three years, so he has become accustomed to being the focal point. He's really just exploded over the last five games, played very well for long stretches this season, but 30 points a game over the last five, that gets your attention in a hurry. But he's starting to get it after that last possession. Offensive rebound, Summers, a block, either Alexander or Smith. Back come the Mountaineers. They need a flurry of threes. Good hands by Ewing. Butler. Wow. How did that go? Bank shots on the baseline. <laughs> That'll win you a game of horse. Oh, you won't even allow that in horse. <laughs> Nobody calls a bank from the baseline. Clock is the ally of the Hoyas right now, and they'll use every bit that they can every time down the floor. Wallace. Huh. Just picking up where they left off yesterday. 17 threes in 28 tries yesterday. Seven threes tonight in 17 tries, better than 40% from beyond the arc. Butler gets the bounce. West Virginia team with the win over UConn yesterday. I think now everybody is completely convinced that they are heading to the NCAA tournament, and deservedly so. They shouldn't have much to worry about on Selection Sunday. Projected perhaps as a 7 or 8 seed. Of course, it's all, as Len says, still a fluid situation. Well, starting, yes, them, starting tomorrow, it, it starts to harden because based on the schedule that's been put out by the Tournament Selection Committee, Saturday is when they start to really focus in and narrow down the number of teams and the teams who are in the tournament. That's Alexander at his best right now. A little bump, creates a little space, knocks down the 12-footer. But then, you know, you draw up contingencies in the event that this team does this, this team does that. That's all about seeding. But by sometime tomorrow, I think the teams that are supposed to be in should be decided upon. And a travel is called on Wallace. A championship week update with Reese Davis on the other side of this timeout. The reality of this game is the Hoyers are going to the final. Another night, another story. That's how this show goes. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. It's East on ESPN. That's where it is. 17-point lead for the Hoyas, under a minute to go here in semifinal number one. Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal. Georgetown on its way to the championship game tomorrow night. Against the winner of either Marquette or Pittsburgh, the Hoyas have already won more Big East Tournament championships than any other team in the league. Broke the tie with the UConn last year. Boston College, of course, now with the ACC. They have won twice. None of the so-called newer teams have won a Big East championship. You saw Big John. John Thompson II is on proudly watching his son, Big John, winning six of those seven Big East championships. Deshaun Butler in and out on the three. Macklin with a rebound. 
Shot clock is turned off. The Hoyas can run out the clock and start thinking about tomorrow night. And the Hoya fans are going to guard and now on their feet. Uh, youngster, run out the clock. What's Chris Wright doing there? <laughs> trying to make up, trying to make up maybe for that technical foul. Get that point back. The NASCAR Nationwide Series of the Bristol presented by GoDaddy.com on ABC next Saturday. Coverage begins with an NASCAR countdown at 2 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. It was a 16 to nothing run for the Hoyas in the second half that blew it open. Roy Hibbert's getting coached not by just JT3. Big John as well. What a night for Hibbert. 25 points, 13 rebounds. He applauds the effort of his teammates as some of the uh, lesser used Hoyas get a chance to play here with the Garden. Omar Watad is into the game. Brian Jansen is into the game. And rightly so. I was going to say Roy Hibbert deserves the laurels. But I credit this game to the Georgetown defense. Slowed down and took Joe Alexander out of the game for the most part. No one for West Virginia really able to step up when the critical expansion of the Georgetown lead came. And the rest is about history. An impressive 40 minutes for the Georgetown Hoyas. The number one seed is onto the championship game tomorrow night after one of the best nights of Roy Hibbert's career. They'll be looking for title number eight and to defend their championship of a year ago. Joe Alexander for the Mountaineers will wait to see where they are headed on Selection Sunday. Georgetown by 17, and they await the winner of our next semifinal, which will begin 20 minutes from now. Here with the Garden in New York, the number six seed Marquette and the number seven seed Pittsburgh, both according to the seedings, pulled off upsets last night. It should be a terrific matchup between the Golden Eagles and the Panthers on this floor just about 20 minutes from now. John Thompson III celebrating with his players and some gathered family and friends. Doris Burke is standing by with Roy Hibbert. Roy, yet another opponent under 60 points and under 40% shooting. Why is this team's defense as good as it is? Well, we try to limit their uh, transition points and we try to get you know good defensive stops every time and we try to slow the game down a lot. After a frustrating night for you last night, only 14 minutes, two missed field goals. What was the game plan for you tonight coming in? My plan was just to go out there and run the off. And said, you know what, I got going in the first half and I kept going strong. My teammates passed it to me and I passed it back out. We did a good job. Nice to see you back. Congratulations, guys. Well, what a difference tonight makes, as we've said a couple of times, Doris. Roy Hibbert with 25 points tonight. Georgetown over West Virginia, 72-55. to 55. Coming up next here on ESPN, college game night update presented by Liberty Mutual. And then we invite you to join us for our second semifinal. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. A huge night for Roy Hibbert, semifinal number two around the corner from the Garden.